In flamenco, we always talk about cante or about the cante. But this word cante, could you tell me exactly what does it mean? Here is another word that has different meanings, different layers. And depending on the context, it expresses different ideas and it can become very confusing. So listen to this extreme example. I'm exaggerating a bit, okay, but it's just for you to see how confusing it can be. Yesterday, I went to a cante concert. I was blown away by the cante desgarrao of the cantaor. I love this cante in general, but especially his cante por solea. And I was really moved by his cante llorado in the cante de remate of his cante. And I think it was a cante del mellizo. So too many times cante in the same sentence, right? Eight, exactly. But each time with a little different meaning. So let's explore together and at the end of this video you'll understand todo, everything. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillen for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing flamenco, you play guitar, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you just love it and you want to understand how it works, today let's talk about vocabulary. As you know, I like to understand the words, the meaning of the words, where they come from. But above all, I like the ideas behind them and the deeper meaning. And if a word has multiple uses, it's because it has multiple meanings. This happens a lot in flamenco. There are words that have different uses because they have different meanings. With the word cante, all the meanings are obviously connected. But understanding these subtleties gives us a broader vision of how flamenco cante works and how flamenco itself works. First of all, the verb to sing in Spanish is cantar for everyone and everything that sings. And the general term for everything that refers to singing is canto, with a O. Like lyrical singing, canto lírico, jazz singing, canto jazz, or even for birds, el canto de los pájaros, bird song. But for everything that refers to the art of flamenco singing, we use cante, with the E. Cante flamenco, cante gitano, cante andaluz, cante gitano andaluz. And even the song of birds can become flamenco in Andalusia, as in this famous coletilla por alegría. Una tortola canta en un almendro, en su cante, and not canto, decía, viva mi dueño. Quick translation. A turtle dove sings in an almond tree, and in her cante she was saying, Long live my landlord. It doesn't say en su canto, but en su cante. It means that that turtle dove is a flamenca one. In this global context, I like to translate cante by singing to really express the act of singing or the vocal aspect of flamenco. In English, it's sometimes translated as song, but I don't really like that. Because one thing is to translate, the other is to really capture and express what is behind the word. We'll talk about it a little later. When we talk about cante, we are also talking about the repertoire. The whole flamenco repertoire is structured primarily in relation to the cante. A palo is a framework for the cante. The styles are specific melodies of the cante. There are families of palos that we call cante de ida y vuelta, cante de las minas, cante de Cádiz, cante de trilla, cante a palo seco. Often we hear cante and something else, like cante hondo, cante festero, cante chico, cante grande, cante gitano, cante puro, which contain sections of the global flamenco repertoire in a more or less precise and controversial way. But we are not here to talk about what is puro, what is not, what is gitano, what is not, what is hondo, what is not, because this would never end. A much more precise way of referring to the repertoire is when we say un cante por, and the name of the palo. Cante por alegría, cante por solea, cante por sigrilla, cante por malagueña. I made a full video on this little word por, because it contains all the global rules of the flamenco game. 
Here it is very precise. When we say a cante por solea, we know exactly to which part of the repertoire it refers. All the styles included in the palo solea and all the rules that the palo solea implies about the compass, about the type of letra, about the melodies, about the harmonic context, about the different processing, etc. When we speak of a whole song piece, what people usually call a song in English, in flamenco we say un cante. Cantaores and cantaoras, flamenco singers are not singing songs, but singing cantes. And this is where I think we should be careful and avoid translating too quickly cante into song. Because the concept and the form of a cante is very different to the concept and the form of a song. Mainly what is important in flamenco cante is the flexibility and modularity. A cante is extremely modular and flexible at many levels. There is a complete video on this. I give you 12 differences between a cante and a song. Go watch it. It's very important. So in this case, I think it's just better not to translate, right? Just to keep the original word un cante. There are things like that that come not only from another language but from another culture with other concepts and the translation cuts off part of their reality. I mean it's like pasta or pizza for example. It's not just dishes but concepts that have no direct equivalence in other languages. So pizza and cante. Moreover in Spanish a flamenco singer is a cantaor or a cantaora which literally means cante maker. And I love that because we can really clearly see the active part of the singer. They are not only interpreters, but they have to make the cante, like to manufacture the cante every time. And this is also why I use Legos, because we have to build the cante every time. Still speaking about structure and modularity, we can use the term cante instead of letra. And here is the same problem. People usually translate the term letra into verse, but a letra is not exactly a verse. A letra is a letra. And if what a letra is is not entirely clear to you, you should go and check this video. For example, when we say el cante de preparación or el cante de temple, we refer to the first letra of a cante or the first letra of a series of letra, the one the singer uses to warm up. The cante valiente is, on the contrary, a much higher, much stronger, much more powerful letra. And the cante de remate is the highest, the strongest letra to conclude, to rematar a cante or a series of letra. So here it's a bit like Russian dolls. We have uh, cantes within the whole cante. It often happens that we use cante to mean style. And there is also a video that explains in detail what is a style in flamenco. For example, in a specific context, let's say we are talking about solea, instead of saying el estilo de la cerneta, the style of la cerneta, we can say el cante de la cerneta. We then know that we are referring to the specific styles, the different solea melodies that are attributed to la cantaora, la cerneta. She never recorded, we don't really know her way of singing, we don't know the timbre of her voice, but we do know the different melodies, the different styles that she supposedly created. The same expression, el cante de someone, can also express the way of interpreting. For example, I like el cante de agujetas, el cante de la niña de los peines, el cante de morente. In this case, I'm talking about the interpreter. The way a person sings, manufactures a cante, interprets the different styles. The voice, the sensitivity, the sense of reason, everything. Unlike la cerneta we just talked about, here we can really hear the artist sing, either live or on recordings, but we are talking about their own way of interpreting. When we associate cante with certain adjectives like rancio or desgarrao, we speak of a particular aesthetic, a global way of interpreting, but not about one single interpreter, one single person like el cante rancio de agujetas. Ya yo no estoy
agujetas used to sing rancio. It means rancid or fermented, something like that, but in a very positive way in flamenco, like very authentic. But there are many other singers who sing rancio. We'll have to talk about this rancio another time. El cante desgarrado is the torn cante. This capacity that certain singers have of tearing out their voices and breaking our souls with their cante. <laughs> We can use other qualifiers to describe very specific effects in the voice for the expressiveness. Not in general, but a specific effect at a specific moment. Like el cante hablado, the spoken cante por Guajira, for example. <laughs> Or el cante llorado, the cried cante por siguiría. So now if I repeat to you the sentence I said at the very beginning of this video, you should be able to understand it in depth. I went to a Cante concert. I was blown away by the Cante desgarrado del cantaor. I loved his Cante in general, but especially his Cante por solea. I was really moved by his Cante llorado in the Cante de remate of his Cante, and I think it was un Cante del mellizo. And that's it for today. I hope it makes more sense now. Thank you so much for watching. If it helps, you can also help me by liking this video, sharing it, subscribe to the channel. Please also consider supporting my work on Patreon. I leave the link in the description. And go and visit flamencomaps.com where I explain my classes, my courses, and my way of teaching flamenco. I see you there. Till then, don't forget, learn flamenco. Make it fun, make it different, make it your own. And listen to Kante and play Palma.